The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday, which was the fifth Sunday in the Lenten season. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 3, where Ezekiel writes, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Dear friends in Christ, imagine what it was like and what it must have been like for the Jews of Ezekiel day, of Ezekiel's day. He and many of the Jews had been carried off into a Babylonian captivity. If you were a believing Jew at that time, someone who didn't worship idols, and well, remember that worshiping idols was the main reason for that captivity to end up taking place. But if you were someone who didn't worship idols and you were someone who believed in the promises of God that a savior would ultimately come, if you believed those things and now all these other things had happened, Jerusalem destroyed, the temple destroyed, captivity, you maybe would wonder, is all really lost? Is all really lost? Maybe the Jews were wondering at that particular time if their God wasn't really as powerful as maybe they thought he was. They had been taught that the Lord had created all things with the power of his almighty word. They believed that God with great power had sent Moses to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. God had sent those 10 devastating plagues to basically destroy the Egyptian empire nation. God divided the Red Sea so the Israelites could cross on dry ground and and when he caused those waters to return to their place, the entire army was, was destroyed. You know, what power God had shown, what awesomeness he exhibited at Mount Sinai when the Lord gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments and all of those laws that governed their life as a nation and their religious lives. But now, had that supposedly all-powerful God kind of run out of power? Again, the temple destroyed, Jerusalem destroyed, and the people carried off into exile. Was this a hopeless situation? Now our reading in Ezekiel for today gives an equally hopeless situation. He says that the Lord's hand was upon him and that the Holy Spirit brought him out and put him down in a valley, a valley that wasn't a normal valley. A normal valley would have waving grain or crops in it, but this was a death valley, a valley that was full of, it says, dead men's bones. And the Lord was eager to have Ezekiel recognize how hopeless a situation this was, how, how dead the bones were. That sounds kind of strange, but how it was a totally hopeless situation. Well, the Lord asked Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? And the reasonable answer for Ezekiel would have been to say, no, they're, they're, they're gone. There's no life there. They, this looked like an entirely hopeless situation. You know, modern medicine today, it does some amazing things, some questionable things too. Doctors, what they've done is they've transplanted hearts, livers, kidneys, and lungs and other organ, important organs. We've even heard about face transplants. Doctors have reattached fingers, arms, and, and legs that were cut off in tragic accidents. But what those doctors were doing is just trying to keep those bones alive. They, those limbs and things alive, they didn't bring them to life. 
and no doctor will ever be able to bring dead bones back to life. Ezekiel knew that, but he also knew that at this point he was talking to the God who created Adam and Eve out of the Adam out of the dust of the ground. He created Eve from that rib that he had taken from Adam's side. So he said to the Lord, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. This was a seemingly hopeless situation. But with a God-given faith, Ezekiel knew that God knew what was happening and he knew that God knew what would end up happening. And, well, you know, in the world that we live in today, since COVID hit, since the war broke out in Ukraine, and, well, since costs for almost everything in our world seem to be just totally skyrocketing all over the place, our world, it really does seem to be in a hopeless situation. And, Will we ever get back to something that's a little bit more normal again? I don't know. You don't know. Doctors, government leaders, they don't know. But we can join Ezekiel in saying, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And now that's the perfect place for that knowledge to be. In the hands and in the mind of our Lord, our loving Lord, the one who had the power to create all things, who had the power to free Israel from slavery in Egypt, to divide the Red Sea, the one who has the power to totally eradicate all of our problems. And you know, he will do that one day when he takes us home to heaven. You know, he knows how everything's going to turn out and what he's going to do always is make sure that everything turns out for the benefit of our eternal souls and so that more and more souls are brought into his believing family. Oh, and this Lord who knows what's going to happen, he didn't just create all things and free Israel from slavery in Egypt. He also gave us Jesus. He also gave us Jesus who paid for all of our sins and one for us heaven. That's the God who knows what's going on. That's the God who is in control. And, well, since he loved us so much that he gave us his son to be our savior, that Jesus sacrificed himself to pay for us, for our sins. Well, you know, maybe we don't know just what's going to happen with our crazy, sin-filled world. But we do know that our God, our loving Lord, is always going to take care of us and he's never going to leave or forsake us. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, life in this sinful world is troubling and confusing, but we're blessed to know you are in control and taking care of all things for our eternal good. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.